Welcome to our review on energy analysis heating. When we're considering a thermal store then, what we find is we can increase the energy in our thermal store by heating. And the way we do this is either by burning a fuel or by using an electric current to transfer energy from fuel. When we're considering having two different objects with a difference in temperature between them, then we will get an energy transfer occurring. So the hot object we refer to as the source and the colder object we refer to as the sink. So what we find is energy is transferred from the source, the hot object, to the sink, the colder object, until they're at what's known as an equilibrium. So until they're at the same temperature. And one thing that we will see is that the rate at which the energy is transferred is much faster when the temperature difference is greater. And you may have seen this in that demonstration they like to do during winter in countries like Canada and so on, where they'll take a cup of hot coffee outside or a pot of boiling water and throw it into the air and it turns into ice, as you can see in the photo. And the reason it does that is because it's got a very rapid exchange of energy because the temperature difference is very high. When we come to do an energy analysis, then one of the things they could ask you to do is to consider a storage heater. Now, these are not quite as common as they used to be in houses and apartments these days. What a storage heater actually is, it's basically like a radiator, but inside, as you can see, it's filled with these concrete blocks around the heating element. So what happens is those concrete blocks heat up when the heating is on, and then it's going to release the stored energy throughout the day when the heating is off. And you tended to find these in sort of flats and houses where they had cheaper heating rates overnight. If we were to do the energy analysis then, to think about the physical situation first of all, at the start of the day we've got a hot piece of concrete and a cold room, and at the end of the day we've got a cold piece of concrete and a warm room. So what we're seeing there is a transfer. As the radiator gets hot, it emits radiation and heats the air. So the energy analysis we're looking at here, they're both thermal stores. One is the thermal store of the concrete. The other is the thermal store of the room. So the concrete has a large quantity within it. The thermal store of the room, only a very small amount. The actual transfer, as we've said, is a heating, which is using infrared conduction and convection. And at the end of the day, the thermal store in the concrete is much reduced and the thermal store in the room is the opposite. It's taken on that energy that has been transferred from the concrete to the room. The next idea we need to consider is dissipation. When we refer to dissipation, what we're talking about is the transfer of energy to stores that are not useful, which cannot be used for working or heating. So to give you some of these examples, I've got the table in the middle there. So if we've got friction between parts of the car engine, then what we'll find is the parts of the engine are heating up. So the energy is going to end up in the thermal store of the engine parts, which is no use to us because we can't use that for actually making the vehicle go. Second one, conduction between water in a kettle and the plastic of the kettle. So the plastic of the kettle gets hot we're transferring the energy to the thermal store of the kettle, which again, that's not going to boil our water for our cup of tea. So that's again, wasted energy. Radiation from the front of a hot oven means that the room that the oven is in warms up. So it's going to be transferred to the thermal store of the surroundings. And again, that's not going to cook your food inside the oven. So it's wasted energy. What we do find though, is that ultimately energy will end up in the thermal store of the surroundings. Obviously, because dissipation means that we're generating wasted energy, we don't really want to do that in any kind of large quantity. We want to reduce that as much as possible. So there's a couple of ways we can achieve this reduction of dissipation. First is we can lubricate items, which will reduce dissipation by friction. And secondly, we can insulate items to reduce dissipation by heating. If we consider how these two things actually work then, the way lubrication works, first of all, is by placing a layer of fluid between two solid surfaces. So that means they're not having the direct contact that would lead to the friction, which would lead to the wasted energy. If we're insulating a surface, then what we're doing is placing a poor conductor between a hot object and a cold one 
to reduce the rate of energy transfer because if it's a poor conductor it's not going to allow that transfer to happen as quickly as it would without it. The last thing we're going to look at is the type of calculation we could be asked to do in this scenario. So a piece of concrete in a storage heater has a mass of 100 kilograms and a specific heat capacity of 880 joules per kilogram Kelvin. The temperature of the block changes from 80 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius. Calculate the energy transferred between the thermal stores. So the first thing we do, as always with a calculation question, is highlight, circle, underline or jot down the key bits of information from the question itself, which I've done in red there, as you can see. Next thing, we're talking about something with a specific heat capacity. So get your physics data sheet, flip it over and look up your equation that's got specific heat capacity in it. So energy is mass times specific heat capacity times the temperature change. Substitute in the relevant values, remembering to work out the temperature change, so 80 minus 20, will give us 100 times 880 times by 60 to give us 5,280,000 joules. Hopefully at the end of this video you can describe how energy is transferred to or from a thermal store. You can carry out an energy analysis on a system where things are heating up or cooling down. You can define energy dissipation and give suggestions on how we can reduce it.